Hi, my name is Nina Daisy Everline. I'm the creator of Sunrise Blossom, volume three out on Kickstarter. It's really good. Gay birds, links down below. I hope you'll enjoy this. This is Two Geeks Talking. Good morning, afternoon, and evening, everyone. Two Geeks Talking is an entertainment industry interview show where we interview the creative people from the comic, film, TV, movie, and video game industries. And of course, I'm your host, Kurt Sasso. Welcome to another episode of Rapid Fire. The concept is quite simple. It is 9 to 15 minutes long. It is 11 questions, and we are on a one-on-one -on -one interview with some amazing, talented, creative people in the entertainment industry. So who do we have as our first guest today? Our first guest is a returning guest. She was on the show earlier this year promoting volumes one and two of her amazing series, Sunrise Blossom, but she is back for promotion of volume three, which is amazing to see at that. We are joined today by the ever-talented Nina Daisy. Boom, 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 boom. Rapid fire. Let's go. <laughs> Someone's excited for this. I love it. I love <laughs> the energy. Let's get this going, like you said. So for those that don't know anything about yourself as a creative person, tell us who you are and what you're bringing to Two Geeks Talking. I'm Nina, I'm an Italian Canadian artist and I make a comic about gay birds. <laughs> and sometimes they turn human, half human and they smooch. <laughs> and of course you're, you're promoting <laughs> volume three of your Kickstarter mm -hmm. as well too. Tell us a little bit about that. Volume one focuses on like the setting of the characters and the development of the initial relationships that these characters have. No spoilers. Um, gay birds, of course, lots of them. No, just one. Never mind. Volume two focuses a lot more on reunions, especially after traumatic events in the first volume. And in the third volume, we focus more on how the character's past is influencing their present and future decisions. Honestly, it's the one that I'm liking the most so far. So I'm really excited to have it out. Awesome. So then what is most misunderstood about your comic? Sometimes people think it's a furry comic. And there's nothing wrong with furry comics, but it's not really a furry comic. It's got furry characters, but it's not a furry comic. And I have been accused at least once of promoting bestiality, which is crazy. It is not about bestiality at all. No, 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 no. Not about bestiality at all. It's about lesbian romances, LGBT representation in a natural and realistic way. And sometimes they're birds. But you know how the internet is. It does happen. Uh, obviously, from time to time, people get their feathers ruffled. No, no pun intended. But, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> so then what is the most recent piece of artwork that you've created that you've always wanted to create but never had time to do? I don't want to say the cover for volume three, but the cover for volume three. Mostly because I've experimented a lot in the design of the cover with very different lighting and color theory and color relativity that like I've always kind of sort of known in theory, but never really applied it. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to try this stuff here and try with the interesting lighting, contrast, color relativity. Like if you took away the background, their skins look crazy because of the colors, but because of like the whole context, it looks normal and right. And it was pretty ambitious a bit. Uh, mostly because of like the whole theory uh, behind the, the color stuff, but I really like how it came out. You know, everyone usually asks, what's the best piece of advice or what's the most bullshit piece of advice that you've <laughs> ever received? But what is the second wisest piece of advice that you've received that has stuck with you as a creative person? Well, the second wisest piece of advice that I've received that I apply to this day, and I've actually started applying even more recently compared to before has to be fucking read comics, <laughs> especially comics uh, that fit your genre, because there are tropes that work for some genres, tropes that don't work for some genres. There are special visual effects that work for some genres and don't work for some genres. Studying comic, particularly, again, of your genre, can really help a lot, like give you ideas, good references, freaking read comics. What was an early experience that you haven't said before yet, where you learned that language had power. Well, um, I'm bilingual. I'm Italian English bilingual. English is kind of my first language, but I grew up in Italy. But when I would be out in public with my mom and everyone around us is talking Italian 
and we don't look like tourists. Like we've lived here our whole lives. Like you can tell we're not tourists and we speak flawless English, especially if maybe there's like people we know around and they're like, look at them speaking English so flawlessly. <gasps> it's so cool. And I'd be like, freaking royalty. <laughs> so what did you create that made you realize, yes, I could do this professionally? Maybe around 40 years ago or so when I finished my very first big-ish comic project. There was this comic that I started when I was in high school called Our Name Was Maya, which was a cute little story about soulmates being separated upon death. One went to heaven, one went to hell, and like they had to reunite. It was really cute. After two and a half years of like working on it, because it was the first project, as is usual, there were like long, big breaks in between hiatuses, because when you're a rookie, that's normal. But after two and a half years, I finished it, 94 pages, and I was like, I can do this. And so soon after that, I started working on Sunrise Blossom, and now volume three is pretty much done and up, and it's been ongoing like that ever since. That's a good story, that, especially creatively. That, that's wonderful to see how progression happens with hard work. Definitely. So then what are three things that you've accomplished creatively that you are proud of? And what are three creative tasks you are looking forward to accomplishing? Okay, this might seem a little bit, mm, but I am really, really proud of having been able to complete pretty much all the series and all the volumes that I've completed thus far. So if you ask me for three things... I say volume one, volume two, volume three of my current comic. But I have been working on it for like four years. And I am really proud of how far I've been able to come at this point. Like not only being able to complete the comics, but also like the growth that I've had gradually, like also on social media and stuff. Like on Webtoons, I'm somewhere at two and a half thousand followers. On Tapas, I'm, I'm at like a thousand five hundred followers. I've never, ever, ever been like featured on the main page of those websites in four years. That's a bit frustrating that I've never, ever, ever been featured, but that only means that all the growth that I had is completely organic and purely of my own effort. And something that I'm looking forward to accomplishing is well, definitely the continuation of the series, possibly volume four, five, six, definitely a new story once this one is done. I've already got like one that is a little bit in the works, but I want to polish it as much as I can before I actually start working on it. So I like working on it on the side a little bit, brainstorming here and there when working on Sunrise Blossom and excited to move forward. How do you think the birth of creativity was formed? I'm pretty sure that creativity was born in a moment of boredom and desire to express oneself. Even with like the ancient cavemen, those like drawing freaking deer or whatever on cave walls, there must have been like rainy days where maybe they couldn't go hunting or, or whatever. And like, what would they do? They just sit in caves doing nothing. And maybe they tell stories, maybe they scratch each other's backs but like you can only scratch each other's backs so much so like boredom mixed with desire to express oneself hair hair freaking brushes and freaking deer on the wall there you go what social stigma in terms of creativity does society just need to get over um i don't want to bring sexism into this but there are different branches of, at least when it comes to like the comic community, where there's a big difference between um, how like female creators and male creators are seen. And of course, it totally depends on the platform. Uh, for example, um, the Webtoon platform, the creators are mostly women. Like, of course, there are plenty of male creators, but they're mostly women. For example, in the superhero or like crowdfunding indie communities, uh, there's like a lot of male creators and there is uh, not a disrespect, but like a lot of objectification that you don't really see on other platforms that sometimes I see someone with a cover with balloon boobies and I'm like, like, it's one thing if it's nice, 
balloon boobies only sell so much. At one point, you're also selling the regression of feminist progress that we've done so far. Like sometimes I'm scrolling down the Kickstarter Indiegogo uh, comics that are up and I'm like, yeah, a man drew this. And sometimes it's pretty clear. What are some insider knowledge that you have from your day job that only people in your industry are aware of? You mean like the, the English teaching industry? Yeah. Well, um, it's a bit of a secret, but in um, some of the, the courses that I teach are like exam preparation courses. Like if you want to take like the IELTS English certification exam or like the Cambridge certification exam or something like that. As teachers, like, like we maybe have like a textbook to follow, but often enough, we have no idea what we're talking about. Sometimes teaching, and this is very similar to being a tour guide. And I also was a tour guide when I was a teenager for a bit. Pretending to know what you're talking about is half the job. Hey, confidence can get you pretty far in life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that, that and bullshit too. But I mean, yeah, confidence is mainly the main thing. <laughs> Last question I have here is kind of a fun one just to wrap up the interview itself. And, uh, you know, thank you again, Nina, for coming on the show. I do greatly appreciate it. What is a TV or film or comic that you thought was underrated in your past, but now you actually enjoy? I would probably have to say Russian Doll on Netflix. Like, I never, ever hear people talking about it. And like, when it first came out, I was like, huh. That's Natasha Leon. That's the, the 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 freaking lesbian from the lesbian prison show. And I was like, eh, it doesn't look that great. But then like I watched it and I was like, this is really, 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 really good. And like nobody is talking about it. And it's a really, really freaking great show. And like the, the Natasha Leon, the main character, the actor who plays the main character is like, she has like these mannerisms and this way of speaking that is like really, really interesting and entertaining. And the plot is brilliantly written. And I was like glued to the screen. I was like, this is amazing. Why is nobody else talking about it? And the second season came out recently and it's even better. And it's like, everyone should watch Russian Doll. It's really, really good. Well, you know, I do hate to say it, but that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. Before I let you go, where can we find you and how can we support you on social media and on the internet? So I've got a link tree, which is down here below, linktr.ee slash Nnedi Aberline. And my Kickstarter is down below also, Sunrise Blossom. And on my link tree, you can pretty much find all my social media. So you can find me... Uh, on uh, Etsy, Patreon, Webtoon, Tapas, uh, Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, TikTok, Discord, Facebook, Redbubble, Fur Affinity, Newsletter, and a partridge in a pear tree. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. And like I said, that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. You can, of course, find this interview and a thousand plus others on our website, tgtmedia.com or twogeekstalking.com. And of course, on our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash tgtmedia. And as I say every week, everyone has a story to tell. It's up to me to help bring that out. Thanks for listening, watching on Two Geeks Talking.